all the viewers who are watching me live on Facebook. I'm Dr. Arun Raikar, uh, consultant DMD and my next session at uh, Manipal Master of Malaysia. Uh, I would like to share a few of my experiences uh, with allergy granitis. Allergy is a, a very broad uh, terminology. Uh, allergy has been seen as a quite commonest condition in the medical practice. We have a global prevalence of 15 to 20 percent uh, individuals suffering from allergic disorders. Uh, we, I would like to restrict my discussion only uh, to the topic allergic rhinitis. Uh, let's know what is uh, uh, allergy. Allergy is something like uh, hyper responsive, uh, res uh, hyper responsive stimuli by the body to any environmental stimuli. Um, today we will just restrict only to the allergic rhinitis. Uh, the definition of allergic rhinitis says that it is uh, intense inflammation of the nasal mucosa epithelium, the nasal mucosa to any environmental stimuli. So allergy we are going to divide it into the duration of symptoms as uh, a, a, a seasonal and perennial allergic rhinitis. We do have another classification where depending on the duration of symptom allergy we classify it as intermittent and persistent allergic rhinitis. Intermittent allergic rhinitis is one where the symptoms last for less than four days in a week uh, and uh, it usually subsides within the four weeks. Uh, normally, when it, if it is a persistent allergic rhinitis, so the symptoms usually last for more than four days uh, in a week and it stays for more than four weeks. That's how we divide whether it is an intermittent or persistent allergic rhinitis. So, what causes this allergic rhinitis? Because of the excessive urbanization and uh, uh, the lifestyle changes and uh, uh, all this could lead to uh, the symptoms of allergic rhinitis. The causative factors could be the occupational irritants, something like those who are working uh, more in the uh, 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 industry, industries, something like uh, cement industry or the paint industries, even the occupations, those are like the teachers who are exposed much to the chalk dust and even the fungal spores which usually will be uh, in the old piles, dust or even the fungal molds on the walls, wet walls, all this can uh, lead to allergy. Even the animals, what we have as pet animals at home, the cat, dog, the tandems of these usually leads to uh, intense uh, allergic rhinitis. Even the dust, uh, the house dust which is uh, uh, infested by the house dust mite. So that usually leads to, the there is a commonest cause for most of the aero allergic rhinitis and uh, we have the pollens, the pollutants like the automobile exhaust. So all this will uh, uh, act as a, something like a culprit for the allergic rhinitis. Uh, so coming to the etiology, the etiology is uh, the short what I have discussed now. The symptomatology includes, uh, there will be intense nasal irritation, sneezing, tiny nose, blocked nose, and the other symptoms, which could be the allergic conjunctivitis, watering of eyes, redness in the eyes. Uh, some individuals do present with uh, the other associated symptoms of allergic rhinitis, such as uh, uh, mouth breathing. In children, we usually do see that most individuals present with mouth breathing, difficult to breathe at night, and uh, some kind of uh, uh, early onset of very mild hearing loss. Uh, they have uh, that does affect their work productivity and the school performance. Uh, so it's better to evaluate uh, uh, for any nasal block or runny nose at the earliest. Uh, we'll ju I'll just tell you the pathophysiology. So the moment an inciting antigen or an environmental stimuli reaches the nasal mucosa, so it leads to intense uh, cell penetration into the nasal mucosa layer, which includes the eosinophils, monocytes, basophils. These are the immune cells of our body. Uh, there will be intense infiltration with the T and B cells which stimulates the mast cells and there will be IgE antibodies which is uh, response by the body for any antigen. Uh, so once this uh, cascading event of immune complex starts, so there will be intense degranulation by the mast cells which uh, secretes chemical mediators such as histamines, leukotrienes, the kinins and the prostaglandins. So all this acts as a chemical mediator for the allergic information. So once uh, there is a release of these chemical mediators uh, by the degranulating mast cells, so it leads to intense vasodilatation that is where the blood vessels engorge causing slight nasal block and there will be secretions, excessive secretion which causes a lot of mucoid rhinorrhea or the nasal discharge 
uh, which is classically seen in allergic rhinitis and because of the stimulation of nerve endings it leads to a cascading event of sneezing, cough and uh, uh, these are the symptoms uh, we generally find. Uh, but uh, in pediatric population, most of the kids with allergic rhinitis present with a uh, lot, lot of mouth breathing, uh, decreased uh, uh, work productivity, school performance and some individuals do present with hard of hearing. So that is because there's a, uh, the nose connects with the ear uh, through a uh, tube called eustachian tube. So that maintains the ventilation into the mid layer cleft. Uh, because the intense allergic uh, stimulation of the uh, nose and the sinuses, the eustachian tube function will be deteriorated. So that is when uh, the secretions tend to accumulate in the mid layer cleft, leading to a condition called as blue ear or uh, the allergic blue ear, which is seen in allergic rhinitis. So this leads to amount of uh, mild hearing loss that is usually being the conductive type of hearing loss. There is a, there is, uh, it is an easily reversible type of hearing loss. Uh, so then coming to the other symptomatology, so uh, and allergy is not a allergic rhinitis is not is not an individual entity by itself. So once there is a allergic stimuli, uh, so the it is not the nose which just responds. Uh, then we it knows the surrounding uh, 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 organs, uh, the eyes, the ear. So the individual who has allergic rhinitis will never have just the symptoms of a blocked nose and runny nose. They usually present with uh, intense injection, uh, congestion of the eyes, the congestion in the eyes, watery eyes. They'll have uh, a post nasal rib that is a secretion which is pulled in the nose, gradually trickle back to their oropharynx. Um, so leading to a condition called a post nasal rib, which leads to the allergy, uh, allergic stimulus spreading towards the oropharynx, the soft palate, where they have a, a itching in their soft palate, a repeated hacking cough, dryness in the throat, and uh, the nocturnal cough, most of the time it's, uh, it's a sign of uh, allergic rhinitis, which remains unattended. Um, so these are the normal symptomatology we find in allergic rhinitis. So we'll uh, move into uh, the treatment part. So the treatment includes, uh, first is the avoidance of allergens. Uh, that is the easy and most cost effective way of treating allergic rhinitis. So by what I mean by allergen avoidance is not to expose, if an individual is sensitive to certain type of uh, allergen stimuli. So it could be even uh, uh, like uh, uh, the occupational irritants, uh, maybe the uh, chalk piece dust or the paint, the fumes of paint. So th these things needs to be uh, avoided. So better to waste to wear a mask uh, every now and then to decrease the priming of the nose with the environmental irritants. Uh, the wearing a mask is a good idea of uh, preventing or reducing. Uh, it, it comes under the allergen avoidance, and then uh, regular uh, nasal breathing exercise. So that again helps in. Uh, reducing the priming of the nasal tissues. Mm. Uh, then comes uh, the regular cleaning at home and better to change, change the bed spreads uh, frequently to vacuum, uh, clean the sofa and the furnitures, to keep the uh, upholsteries, the leather upholsteries or uh, the, uh, whatever furniture we use at home uh, in pristine shape with uh, uh, proper cleaning with vacuum, uh, dusting the curtains, so all these things to a great extent helps in reducing the initial trigger of allergic rhinitis. So this comes under allergen avoidance and the treatment part we usually we have various category of medications which we will be using for treating and managing allergic rhinitis. The first time the foremost uh, treatment remains uh, the allergen avoidance. Then comes the in the medical line of management we have uh, the antihistamines, the leukotriene inhibitors, and that's the anti-leukotriene mast cell stabilizers and the intranasal corticosteroids and the nasal douching. So to a great extent it helps in uh, reducing the allergic response of the nasal epithelium. Uh, the antihistamines, uh, these are the drugs which we usually prefer in mild to uh, very mild cases of allergic rhinitis where the primary complaint of the patient will be the sneezing, uh, runny nose and slight nasal block. But they, most of the symptoms will be uh, temporary that is only Whenever they are exposed to uh, intense stimuli, they usually react in the form of uh, sneezing. So we have something called as the early phase reaction and the late phase reaction whenever they are exposed to the dust. 
uh, or any inciting stimuli which leads to allergic rhinitis. So in the early phase reaction, the patient usually will have a uh, intermittent sneezing, there will be watering of nose uh, and uh, uh, there will be uh, even the congestion of uh, the eyes. So this uh, comes under the early phase reaction to an allergic stimuli. The late phase reaction ensues with uh, nasal block, a thick mucoid discharge. So this goes in uh, favor of uh, uh, the late phase reaction. And whenever there is any allergic stimuli to the nose, it does involve the sinuses also. So the complications uh, what we see after uh, if the allergic rhinitis is not treated is, so it could lead to a condition called as allergic rhinosinusitis, where there is intense inflammation within the nasal mucosal epithelium can involve the sinus also leading to form of polyps. So polyps are nothing but a inflamed mucosa which just pops from the sinus towards the nose causing obstruction to the airway and longer the polyps are there uh, uh, that usually causes a chronic nasal obstruction and it affects the ventilation of the insufficient tube which leads to uh, mild conductive hearing loss and longer the duration of polyps the patient resort to do more of mouth breathing and the other problems could be the obstructive sleep apnea that is the patient usually have very loud snoring because of a blocked nose and whenever the snoring increases again there are other comorbidities which sets in uh, like the hypotension and the uh, poor work poor activity uh, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so all this will be attributed to the effect of nasal polyps causing uh, chronic obstructive sleep apnea. So these things has to be managed surgically. Uh, so now next time we come into the other line of medical management that is uh, uh, the leukotriene receptor uh, antagonists or anti leukotriens so the motricas uh, they help in reducing the leukotriene that's a chemical mediator again which helps in reducing um, uh, the priming response of the nasal uh, mucosa whenever uh, it comes in contact with any antigen so uh, this uh, anti leukotriene helps in reducing the nasal itching the nasal discharge and the nasal blockage uh, so this we usually use for short duration and most of the time when they are not responding to this primary line of management we resort to the intranasal corticosteroids uh, which soothens uh, the nasal epithelium and reduces the uh, priming time. Uh, uh, to a great extent it reduces the symptoms of sneezing, um, the itching of the nose, uh, the rhinorrhea and the blocked nose. So uh, after this uh, line of management, uh, the patient is doing well, he, he can continue with a uh, good amount of nasal breathing exercise, uh, uh, lifestyle modifications and uh, normally the nose uh, does the job of a humidifier, uh, so it helps in increasing the temperature. So normally when uh, we are outside, so the outside temperature if it is around 22 degrees, our body temperature is 37.5, so that's the normal temperature. So at this temperature normally the uh, shift of 15.5 degrees is done by the nose. So this happens only because of heat exchange which takes place in the turbinates. So that helps in uh, uh, the job of increasing the temperature of the outside the air to the body's temperature. And it helps in humidification of the air and it helps in filtration of uh, the uh, filtration of the air with any like the pollens, allergens or the bacteria virus that gets usually neutralized in the nose. So uh, this will be the function of nose. So coming to the second part, that is how we manage allergic rhinitis surgically. So when all this medical line of management fails, or if it is not giving any effective symptom-free interval for the patients, so then uh, the surgical option it has a very limited uh, 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 outcomes. That is normally uh, we suggest surgery uh, uh, if they have any anatomical deformities in the nose. Uh, complementing with the allergy that is a deviated nasal septum and whenever the allergic response is intense it leads to the formation of polyps into the sinus so that leads to chronic obstructive uh, blockage of uh, the nose so that needs to be corrected uh, with surgery like the functional endoscopic sinus surgery so that helps in addressing the issues of the sinus as well as the anatomical abnormalities of the nose uh, uh, so to conclude uh, I would uh, say that uh, it's always uh, with a uh, good amount of exercise and uh, detecting uh, the inciting cause, avoidance. So this becomes uh, the best way to address allergy and whenever any such issues of nasal block or uh, runny nose which is not subsiding in a week. 
So never uh, take it lightly or manage with any over-the-counter medications. Uh, better to take a opinion from the specialist and uh, go accordingly. And uh, this, this is how we can manage allergy. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, we have uh, okay, a question from Mr. Sampar. So, he seems to be studying. I shall have dust allergies. How to work up? So, first we have to know like uh, what you are really, really allergic to. There are certain tests such as, uh, such as the skin prick test. So, which helps to isolate or uh, uh, identify what you are really allergic to. It's uh, a skin prick test is where the antigens uh, for what you are allergic to will be injected intradermally into the skin. And we look for the response of the skin. Based on that, that can be treated with uh, immunotherapy where uh, increasing dose of antigens will be injected. So that helps in nullifying the allergy. 